Hello guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing all right, so here I am again, I'm gonna do a guide to sidestepping. I understand that a lot of you beginners or intermediate players don't quite understand how sidestepping works in the game. And I don't blame you for that to be honest, it's a very difficult concept to understand. The game just tells us that sidestepping exists, but it never really teaches us how to do it properly. There is never a proper tutorial that exists in the game. Well, whatever Harada, that's what he wants. This game is just so difficult to understand, but never mind that, that is what I'm here for. So, I'm gonna try to explain this as best as I can, so let us begin. So, there are many factors that come into play before you sidestep a character's move. First of all, exactly how fast is that move where you trying to step? How many hits does that move have? More importantly, what side does that move track and not track to? Next, you also need to consider your character's frame advantage or disadvantage. And also the distance both characters are away from each other. You also need to consider the timing of the sidestep and that of the move that you're trying to sidestep. And another thing that you need to consider are the character's hurt boxes. So what this basically means is that moves are not identical to one another in terms of their tracking. Some moves track better to one side than the other side. Like for example, most characters have a generic down forward one. And most down forward ones in the game track to the character's left side. While at the same time, most down forward twos track to the character's right side. But I know for a fact that this is not the case for every character, which makes Tekken a bit more complicated than what you think. For example, since I main law, this down forward one and down forward two have their tracking split. Lost down forward 1, tracks to his right side instead, and his down forward 2 tracks to his left side. And some down forward 1s have no tracking at all, like for example, Lily, her down forward 1 doesn't track jack shit, but she makes up for it by having a very good sidestep. She is harder to hit than most of the characters. And some special moves in the game are homing moves, in which you will know that they're homing because they will have a white sparkle effect whenever you do them. And for some moves like for example, thanks back 4 and Devil Jin's Laser Scraper, they track very well to both sides, even though they are not registered to be legitimate homing moves. And another thing that you need to consider are the character's hurt boxes. Some characters are able to step better than the others. Like Lily and Alyssa, they have slim hurt boxes, therefore they can step better. And some characters have larger hurt boxes and thus they won't be able to step as good as the other characters. Like for example Jack and Gigas. These guys hurt boxes are too wide, therefore you may find them not being able to step certain moves at certain situations. Alright, so that makes tech and sidestep mechanic even more complicated. And we haven't even covered everything yet, so please bear with me. Alright, so before we talk about the next part, I'm gonna assume that you guys already know some frame fundamentals. You already know that the fastest form of attacks in the game are highs which are 10 frame jabs. And the fastest mid will come at around 13 frames, or 12 if your character happens to be blessed with a 12 frame mid. So for the first rule, uh, remember what I'm about to say now, repeat after me. The faster the move is, the harder it is to step that move. For example, a 13 frame down forward 1 is so much easier to step than a 10 frame jab, assuming that they do not have any tracking properties whatsoever. Because sidestepping will also take a few frames, and because of that, in order to successfully step a 10 frame jab, you would need to be at worst at a disadvantage of minus 3 frames, and that is the magic number that I want you to remember. As long as you're at a minus 3 or an even better frame disadvantage, 
you will be able to step jabs and any other move that is slower than a jab. Which is basically every move as long as they don't crack. Some people will say that the worst possible frame disadvantage to be able to step jabs is really minus 4 rather than minus 3. Well, personally, I don't like minus 4. And the reason for that is because from my own experience, minus 4 really is a hit or miss situation. Jabs may hit or not hit you, and that is why I prefer minus 3. So right now, you might be asking, what happens whenever we're at a frame disadvantage that is worse than minus 3? Well, so from minus 4 to minus 6 is when the fast highs like jabs and magic force become harder to step, but you will still be able to step the slower moves such as the mids and lows which are a lot slower than jabs. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna show you guys what happens whenever we get hit by Brian's hatchet kick, which puts Brian at plus 5 at his end, which means at our end, we're at minus 5. And as you can see, if Brian tries to jab us, we cannot step the jab no matter what we do. But if he does, let's say, his 13 frame down forward 2, then it is possible for us to step that to the right, but never to the left because it tracks to that way. And here is another example. Every time we block Dragunov's while running 2, this puts Dragunov at plus 6, which means we are put at minus 6. And now we can see that, of course, it is impossible to step the jabs, but now his 13 frame down forward 1 also becomes impossible to step. So now you see the difference. We just went from minus 5 with Ryan to minus 6 with Dragonov, and all of a sudden, we're not able to step 13 frame moves anymore, unlike what we did with Brian. So as we can see, we are still able to step his down forward 2, but we can never step his jabs in down forward 1. But from minus 7 to minus 9 is when it becomes almost impossible to step. In this situation, you're put in a heavy frame disadvantage that stepping moves becomes very hard to do. So you have no other choice left but to guess what your opponent is about to do next. So should you remain standing or should you duck? It's completely up to you. Okay, so let us do another example. Let's make Jin do his uh, down forward 1-4 and make him immediately step after getting that move block. And now you will notice that almost anything we do will hit Jin. And that happens because Jin is at minus 9 after he gets down forward 1-4 block. And with Jin being at minus 9, he has very limited options. He cannot just avoid our moves using movement. And he also cannot challenge us because there is a huge chance that he will just get counter hit by the move that we're about to do. And that is why it is ideal for us to go for a mix-up attempt because Jin being at minus 9 has very limited options. Your goal should be to mix the opponent up should they be put in a heavy minus situation. But if you were the one that's put in a heavy minus situation, I'm sorry to say, but you have to take the mix-up. Just don't do anything stupid. Okay, so pushback will also play a part whether you can step a move or not. Usually, when you're far enough that jabs are unable to reach you, this completely takes them out of the equation. The only moves left for you to worry about are the ones that reach far, and usually they are the ones that are slower than jabs, and thus you will be able to step at worse frame disadvantages. It is good to think about frames and pushback like opposite sides of the same coin. They kind of work against each other, like a counterbalance. Well, ideally, you'd want to be closer to your opponent when you're at good frames. And you want to be away when you're at bad frames. Alright, so what is the difference between a sidestep and a sidewalk? When exactly do you use one or the other? Well, to keep things simple, sidestepping which is done by single tapping either up or down is better for avoiding those fast single hit moves and some fast one-twos. 
and sidewalking, which is done by single tapping and then holding either up or down, is better for strings and single hit moves with slower startups. Now why is this so? The goal of you stepping is of course is to not just avoid the opponent's move, but also to punish or interrupt it. My mistake before when I was still learning how this works was that I always tried to punish everything with a launcher after I stepped something. Sometimes it worked, but sometimes it did not work. Now why is that? What Punisher to use totally depends on the recovery of the stepped move. If the move recovered slow, then a launcher is the Punisher that you would want to do. But in case of something that recovers fast, it is better for you to use your faster Punishers. Let's say the opponent is doing something like jabbing in your face and then blocking. Sure, you can sidestep a single jab, but if you go for a slow Punisher, then the opponent is likely to block that and you will end up as the one getting punished instead. But when you go for, let's say, a faster 10 or 12 frame punisher, then that's more likely to punish her with jab just in time. When you watch JDCR play Heihachi, you will notice that he doesn't get greedy by always doing an electric every time he steps something. No, no, he just goes for the more reliable 112 or the twin pistons. Well, the point is that you also need to consider the recovery of the moves that you're trying to punish before you even try to punish them. But in case of strings, you could either wait for the entire string to finish and punish it, or what you could do instead is to interrupt it in between with a fast move, well, preferably with a fast counter hit launcher like a Magic 4. Okay, so for the last part, how in the world would you counter a sidestepping opponent? Well, I'm sure that the first thing that comes into your mind would be to use homing moves, and you're not wrong. However, there are also other moves that have natural tracking, and they could be used as well. And they could be safer to use, and also could give an even better reward, such as a launch or a counter hit. But if you watch some pro players, you will see that they sometimes tend to do the smaller lows instead of the actual homing moves. Because some lows have natural tracking built in. Such as a generic down 4, which put you at minus 2 on hit, but the good thing about it is that it's a 12 frame tracking high crushing low packed in one move. It's also slightly slower than a dick jab, but the tracking property it has makes up for it. But the thing is that, you also need to remember that the slower the homing move or tracking move is, the more prone it is to getting counter hit, and it also becomes easier for the opponent to sidestep and immediately block it. So generally, a homing or tracking move is better if it's faster. So if you're playing someone like Paul or Nina, well, good for you because they have 12 frame homing moves which come very very handy. So aside from using the homing or tracking moves, there is of course another way to deal with stepping. And I'm going to teach you guys the concept of axis realignment. Well, in Tekken, a sidestep or a sidewalk is only most evasive at the very beginning of its animation. So what that means is that the sidestep will have to be timed correctly in order to dodge the move that you're trying to step. If you don't time it right, then you're more likely to get hit by that move. Which also means that any form of delay will cause your move to track the sidestep. And this is because your character will naturally realign or lock on to the opponent moments after the sidestep has happened. And one fun minor detail that you can notice is that your character will begin to turn their head to the opponent's character. And that's the cue that the axis has already realigned. But that's actually the worst possible way to realign with your opponent, because some moves do not have any tracking at all even if you delay them. And you could have done actually something better instead of doing nothing during that instance. Access realignment. You guys were already doing this, but you guys were just not aware that you were already doing it. Because naturally, any movement that you do in Tekken will realign with the opponent. Such as, for example, forward dashing, 
backdashing, stepping or sidewalking, moving your character will cause it to realign, and even laying still just like what we saw. So by knowing this, you can counter the opponent's sidestep. But the thing is that a good opponent will not let you easily do this. And that is the reason why the mind games of realignment are born. Let's say your opponent likes a sidestep and block. And you have already tried using a homing move, but your homing move happens to be slow and that just ends up getting blocked. So you try something else. Instead, you try dashing in to realign, well, you could have used the low instead, and that would have worked. But the thing is that your opponent has already picked up on what you want to do. So the next time you try, he tries to counter hit instead. So how do you beat that now? Well, you remember that slow homing move that you were originally trying to do? That would have worked now. But let's say what you've done is bait out the counter hit move by dashing in and dashing back out. So then you could punish it yourself. But then what if he restart again and instead he does a low as you dash back out. <laughs> and now you can see the mind games are endless. So these are just examples I just want to show you. Alright people, so I really hope that I did a good job in explaining how sidesteps work in the game. If you look online through Google or Reddit or whatever website, you can find sidestep charts such as this one. Well, it does tell you what side you need to prioritize stepping to when fighting such and such characters. And it does make it easier to remember. However, it's always better to just lab the character yourself. Know what their key moves are, what side those moves track to, because if you don't lab, it's really just a vague idea. You only know what side to step to, but that's really not enough. You also need to know what moves you need to step, and also how you should step them. If you have any questions, just post it in the comments below. And yes, special thanks to my patrons who continue supporting the channel, thank you very much, and peace out.